Welcome to the 18th season of the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Our Nitwits panel includes Neil Riddell of the Altoona Mirror, Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com, Jacob Kalker of WTAJ Sports, and a special guest Nitwit each week. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Reed and Cellini, doctors Reed and Cellini provide orthodontics for children and adults. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue Altoona, just ask rental. Buy what you want, rent what you need. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Welcome once again to the Nitwits alongside Neil Rudell, Mark Brennan, and our guest Nitwit, Joe Nastassi. I am Jacob Kalker. Penn State improves to 7-2 on the year with a 39-0 win over Illinois. It's the Nittany Lions' most lopsided Big Ten win since 2002. Christian Hackenberg really put together everything, it seemed like. And so far, would you call this the most complete game he's played this season? Oh, with, uh, without question. Uh, the way he, you know, the way he's taking care of the ball these last six games, but he was accurate. He was really impressive from the very beginning, and especially in the short passing game. And, and they've been two areas that, that he hasn't been overly impressive. Uh, you know, again, measuring him against his ability and his potential. So I think the way they started, I think everything is beginning to come together for this offense. His pocket management seems so much better the last couple of weeks. The offensive line has been good, but not great. He's, he was sacked a couple times, but there were times when they got pressure on him and he was able to kind of just deftly move away from it or scramble a little bit and Joe I mean you know for a, a receiver mm -hmm. when your quarterback's able to do that and then, and then he's starting to find these they're getting a little bit more time to get open and, and he's finding them yeah he's he's uh, again what you said there he's given himself a little bit more time a little bit more time for them downfield and without a doubt these last two games if you look at his footwork it looks much better I mean, he's able to escape just a little bit stepping up he climbed a pocket well three or four times just like he did right there but again just giving a half second a second or whatever it would take uh, to avoid the sack uh, and then create a play downfield again probably the best uh, best game that he's had to date since um, you know the new uh, new staff yeah Neil you mentioned the short passing game it seemed like just watching it from the sidelines the touch on some of those short passes they weren't all those hundred mile an hour fastballs how much of that comes from kind of building the rhythm, being more comfortable in the pocket, and how much of that do you think he's he's consciously worked on here in recent weeks? Well, I mean, let, let's face it. I mean, this kid has been hit so many times in a couple years that it's a wonder he doesn't have some sort of twitch. Uh, but he, I think as the offensive line has progressed and made adjustments and even, uh, you know, replaced people with injuries, he's felt more comfortable and, and hey, uh, you know, Barkley's presence has made a huge difference, too, because the defense hasn't been able to just kind of, uh, you know, load up. Yeah, no, you know, as we're looking at these highlights, you can see pass, pass, pass. The thing that I like, and, and when we're going to be critical of the offensive staff when they struggle, I think you have to give them credit when they do well. Absolutely. The last couple of weeks, they've really been taking what the opponents are giving them, whether it was the deep pass last week, maybe some shorter stuff this week. Illinois comes in with a really good defensive line. They have a couple kids up there who are going to be NFL players, run stuffers, did a pretty good job against Penn State's run overall. So what does Penn State do? They start airing it out, go to Hackenberg, and again, not only is he getting it done, but he's getting it done to multiple receivers. Geno Lewis gets back involved, throwing him an alley-oop. Uh, Tompkins, I mean, Godwin here. You know, these, he's just, the, Jasicki gets back involved. I mean, the ability to do that to me, just very impressive that the offensive staff has adjusted the last couple Eight weeks. different receivers, including yeah. Hackenberg. Yeah. And, and there's no question. I mean, I can second that as well if I can. Uh, that uh, the, This offensive staff has taken a lot of heat. 
And when they do something like this and you watch these kind of highlights, you see what they put together. They absolutely broke Illinois' will to play that ball game. They just down in and down out, dominated that game, was up front. We changed it up. We did different formations. Outstanding job again by, by that staff. Uh, doing a good job and learning as, as we all do, but learning as they go, teaching as they go with these kids. And it's, uh, it's pretty impressive to watch, and I, I was really happy for them yesterday. On the other side of the ball, I want to get to the defense now. It's the first Big Ten shutout for a Penn State team since blanking Minnesota in 2009. I want to start the conversation with a simple number, 167. That's the total yards that that defense allowed to Illinois. And when you're talking about a game that was easily three, four, five scores in the second half, keeping that focus on shutting them out and limiting them throughout the game. Well, you, I mean, you had a sense when they, they're facing a quarterback like Lunt who doesn't run at all. I mean, they, this, this defense, if it struggles with anything, it's with mobile quarterbacks. And I think part of the reason is because the linebackers are so young and they have to make quick decisions. When this defense is able to pin its ears back and get after somebody, whether it's the defensive line, whether it's linebackers blitzing, you know, that makes, that's a whole different ball game. For them going forward, I mean, Northwestern has a quarterback who will do some running, but, you know, they're not going to face anybody like a Barrett or even a kid from Maryland the rest of the year. So I think that actually bodes well. But I don't know that it was all that surprising because you look at this defensive line, you know, in my view, I can't imagine anybody's playing better than this defensive line in the nation. I can't. When this defense has issues, I think it's because, again, the linebackers are young. Maybe the secondary is making some mistakes, but this line is unbelievable. Well, you may have three fairly high – uh, draft picks mm -hmm. yeah. on the defensive line this year. Yeah, well, yeah we look at football in general and college football especially, it's all matchups and momentum. And, you know, we had, uh, we matched up really well against them and we rode the momentum wave. So, I mean, again, we were able to go in there, uh, break their will on both sides of the football, create plays, and it's just motion creates emotion. And we started working it down the field and stuffing them three and outs several times. I mean, Again, another great job by that defense. You know what was cool? Reader gets the pick that we just saw there. They come out, boom, right to Geno Lewis. We have not seen them correct. just yeah. capitalize after right a away. quick turnover yes. like well, that. Well, these last yes. two weeks, they're taking more shots in the end zone. I mean, we were sitting up in the press box these, you know, the first month of the season wondering with the, this quarterback they have, when are they going to throw the ball in the end zone? They were settling for field goals. The other thing is they've made Illinois punt 12 times. Usually you do that, you're going to win. Yeah, and one quick point. I mean, Tim Beckman left this program in a horrible mess. So I do think we have to kind of couch everything with the fact that mm -hmm. this this Illinois team w was not one of the more powerful teams. They've played some good football. Mm -hmm. The guy's done a good job going in there and, and kind of salvaging things. But that team looked like it didn't want any part of kind of being there. I think Joe right. kind of mentioned it off air right, a little right. bit. Defensively, Austin Johnson after the game said that they were so focused on just making Illinois a one-dimensional team. And when you talk about having that quarterback that can't add that second dimension by himself, is that really, uh, now that we're looking at these final three games, do you think that that might be something as they face a guy like Connor Cook or you know a Michigan offense that's going to have a drop-back passer? Well, you know, it, it's going to change. Week to week changes. Again, we just talked about it. I talked a little bit about matchups. And uh, it seems that our defense plays better against more of a pro style quarterback, a uh, pocket passer, uh, allows them to do a little bit more exotic blitzes possibly, where you cannot do that against an Ohio State. So it does, it sort of handicaps you in a sense of what you can do and how much of your playbook you can use defensively because you know you got guys running read options it's a different ball game there with uh, how you have to uh, scheme for in game plan on that defense side of the ball what one dimensional teams typically don't beat Penn State right but I think it's kind of fascinating right now with these three games the way they've positioned themselves you know they're still in a position to have a really good year especially if they can win this week yep. all right well that is the final word of our first segment still to come on the nitwits we'll take a look at a Halloween surprise we got to see after the game and it's never too early for some bold projections. Get ready to book your flights and hotels. More nitwits after a quick break. The nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Drs. Reed and Selaney, Orthodontics for children and adults. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona. Just ask rental. Buy what you want, rent what you need. I'm Jesse Delavalle from your Penn State Nittany Lines, and you're watching the Hit Wits. 
All right, well, James Franklin likes to talk about some of the aging that he goes through during some close games, not really wrinkle-inducing when you're beating a team by 39. How much of an emphasis and a boost can this be as Penn State faces its, its tough final three games here this season? Uh, I mean, I think, number one, when you're playing 10 games in 10 weeks, to be able to maybe take a deep breath and not being a, a nail-biter that comes down to the final mm -hmm. series, and also getting some of the younger guys into the game. I mean, listen, uh, you know, to see Mark Allen do what he did late in the game, to see some of the walk-ons get in there and have a chance to do it. And one of the things that I thought was really cool, the, the starting defense, those guys were still involved. When they had that muff punt late and, and gave the ball to Illinois, they still wanted to get that mm -hmm. shutout, and everybody was still jacked up when they were able to hold on that fourth down. It was really nice. To, it, I, I enjoy seeing when the starters are still as invested in the game when it's so out of hand and all the backups are in. I think that's so good for team chemistry. Is turning point too strong of well, a phrase? Uh, just to add on to that real quick, uh, maybe. But I, I think a good piece of coaching that they did, and it was pretty apparent, the fresher team yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Illinois is worn down physically yeah. and mentally. And the fact that they it went into the week saying that they're scaling da back practice, you know, you could see a team that had a lot of hop yesterday. And uh, I'm curious, you know, Northwestern has a week off. So I think that that's going to really bode well for Penn State. They're going to need that. Yeah, I, I, I like, um, it seems this coaching staff, again, as they go through the season, as they've gone through the process being here at Penn State, I mean, they're so brand new um, to Penn State. Uh, just watching the decisions they're making and learning and adapting. I mean, it's all about change and adapt. I mean, and that's what they seem to be doing. Early in the year, you know, everybody was wondering who they were, what they were doing, do they know what they're doing now? People are starting to say, oh, okay, you know, that's what I like to see. I like to see us scaling down practice. It, they're doing, they're making a lot of good decisions because as, as fans and, and people want to jump on all the negative right away, they got to remember how this is a process for them as well. And, and, and I really like the direction. And, and Coach Franklin keeps talking about the direction we're going. I, I really like it. He's restoring the tradition and everything we're all, all about, and we're going in the right direction. I really like it. I like what we're doing. I know Neil always likes to ask the identity question. Do you feel like this this team has gotten that identity? Well, I think they showed yesterday that they could be balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the Hackenberg that we've all been waiting for, uh, you know, this year. And, and the way that he had the command of things uh, yesterday and how accurate – you know, particularly the way he's, the chemistry he has with Godwin and the effort you see from Godwin after the catch, um, you know, and that they look like they can beat you in a couple different ways now. Yeah, I mean, after the game, Franklin talked about uh, how, you know, a lot of people were really wondering about them early in the season and, you know, kind of, I, I mean, he, I, I thought he took it maybe a little bit too far. I don't think everybody was that far down on them, but I do think you have to give everybody credit, the coaching staff, the players, for never kind of losing their own patience and, and, and panicking at any point because I don't think they did even in Ohio even at Ohio State yeah that to me was not a team that was just absolutely out of its element I mean it got away late in the game but they lost the game afterward you know they kind of understood what happened mm -hmm. what needed to be adjusted and they've bounced back and done a nice job since all right how about a curveball here let's take <laughs> some interesting video and throw it up if we can this is Senior Anthony Zettel <laughs> rocking the Jason Voorhees mask from Friday the 13th. It was Halloween. <laughs> kind of what the brand almost that he's building here is the wildest of these wild dogs. When you're Joe, a punk, I you think see you like should have come hey, out to the media room dressed like that. What was like I that? thinking here? You know, here's the thing, though. Those that's what you want your defensive tackles to think like you want them you, you 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 don't want them to be normal people you want them to do things that are just like that you want them to show up like that and think a little differently than you and i or they wouldn't be good defensive linemen the player reactions were priceless i that's mean great. aj austin johnson was you know yeah. was said i mean don't you guys have to be wacko he goes oh absolutely that's yeah. what we have to be absolutely and reuter was uh, i'm sorry reader was just kind of shaking his head saying that's you know that's just zettel for you well parker <laughs> anthony i asked him what what was the deal and he said honestly parker cothran basically told him he wouldn't go out there and do it and so it was on him to he, he went out there and did it and so good for him it, it who just, would ever dare him to do anything yeah, number one. Right. at this point exactly I, I think treat. at this point that the right the, the dare game has been stepped up by Anthony Zettel beyond belief at this point well and, you can see that these kids are having fun yeah. particularly mm -hmm. when they're having success and the coaches are too yeah. you know on the sideline a lot of these assistants have been fully engaged with a lot of enthusiasm and I think that's something else that uh, you know maybe you know that these players are buying into 
And that and that's really really important because there's a there's a fine line between being disciplined and then being out of control. And I think these coaches are really doing a good job of letting them have a lot of fun and being very disciplined at the same time. Well, Zettel's one of those guys that he says he wants to keep winning so Penn State can go somewhere warm during bowl <laughs> season pretty quickly in, in maybe a sentence or two. Where do you see Penn State going in the postseason? You might have a feel Well, I mean, I think they have to win a couple more games to get into the mix for a, a Citrus Bowl mm -hmm. or an Outback Bowl, that sort of thing. So right now, I mean, I would have to imagine it's the, you know, Nashville, uh, Santa Clara, uh, you know, those types of mm -hmm. bowls. But I just, they're not quite there. The good thing is they have games against Northwestern right. and Michigan who are both kind of in the same boat that they are. So if mm -hmm. they're able to win one or both of those games, it gets them a little bit closer to a Florida Bowl. Yeah, I always felt that, you know, particularly the fact they haven't been south for quite a while mm -hmm. now, that their bowl scenario was always better than maybe we thought it would be. I would think they're in the mix in Florida. And, of course, they're going to travel after the bowl sanctions, you know, not being able to go. This is still a, yeah, not just that they haven't been to Florida, you know, last year, but it's mm -hmm. you're talking those years when they just couldn't go to a bowl. So mm -hmm. that obviously I think will also come into play. Well, time for another short break from the Nitwits. When we return... Look at perhaps the only glaring concern from what was a 39-point win. How much of a shadow this particular area casts on the day? We'll take a look when we come back. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South Altoona. Ask for us by name by Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. Now back to the nitwits. A roundtable discussion of Penn State football. It's hard to call it a complete game, the most complete game of the year. James Franklin stopped noticeably short of calling it that, even though it was a 39-0 win. The glaring, ugly part, the kicking game. How much of a shadow does that cast on an otherwise bright day? You know, it's been up and down all year. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for Joey Julius, you hate to be critical of these, you know, young kids out there. But, you know, you're on the big stage here and you have to start coming through. You know, not only do you have two extra points blocked, which I can't even fathom. I mean, you know, Brett Conway went an entire mm -hmm. career. Did he have any ever I don't remember. blocked? Yeah. And, yeah. and then when you – you start hooking them the kickoffs out of bounds it's like you know it one thing's leading to another this is something coming down this home stretch you figure these are going to be pretty tight games you just can't afford to have and you know this is why when one of the kind of underrated things of the sanctions they were unable to spend scholarships on kickers and punters or they decided not to mm -hmm. you know until this year when they're gonna you know they're yeah. keeping their fingers crossed they're gonna be, bring a couple kids in uh, but yeah that's definitely a, a huge thing they're, going down the stretch they're fumbling too much on on special teams and there's some organizational things with yeah. with uh, calling timeouts mm -hmm. uh, you know those timeouts are going to be meaningful uh, not all these games are gonna be 39 nothing so uh, I think those are as James would say areas that need cleaned up <laughs> yeah it's not a big deal when you're 39 people don't look at it, the kicking game but when you have a you know a 10 7 ball game 17 14 you know those kickers are a big deal punters are a big deal change in field position so like you said down the home stretch here in November football that's what it's all about uh, you know kick game no turnovers good defense I mean that that's what's going to come down to so uh, yeah, area of concern, so we're going to have to tighten that up for, for this One week. One quick note, the Italian kid, Pascarello, uh, I'm joking. According but, to Mike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah according to Mike. Uh, you know what, Dev, he's actually yeah. done a pretty good job mm -hmm. negating some really good punt returners the last couple yeah. weeks after a very difficult effort by the punters at Ohio State. They've done a nice job there. So that's another one of these things where it was nice to see they struggle and somehow they figured it out. It's kind of more directional kicking, yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. They've I think covered they reasonably job. well, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, generally, it seems like one area gets stronger on special teams, another gets weaker, kind of a week-to-week -week situation. Nice to a farmer do well, too. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, big kick return. Uh, Penn State starting its final quarter of the season with a trip to face Northwestern. Our predictions are on the way when we return to see how the Lions will fare against Chicago's Big Ten team. The Nitwits are brought to you by EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, 
featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday. It will be a noon kickoff at Ryan Field in Evanston as Penn State travels to face Northwestern. We will start our predictions with the king of the picks so far. Thank you, Neil Jake. Ago. And I know we got your alma mater, so we'll see how loyal you yeah, where's are. Where's his purple shirt? Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, you know, Penn State's not played well on the road. They've got to prove that. Uh, but Northwestern is uh, somewhat one-dimensional. I think Penn State's recruiting. You're starting to see a lot of good player options and spreading the ball around and whatnot. I think it's going to be a close game. I say Penn State 24, Northwestern 20. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that uh, I didn't realize how offensively kind of challenged Northwestern has been. Only 14 touchdowns on the year. So I think it's going to be another defensive type struggle. I'll go Penn State 21, Northwestern 17. The one area that I think that uh, the Wildcats <laughs> could present an issue would be the quarterback play of Clayton Thorson. He's a little bit more one of those two multi-dimensional quarterbacks. The question is, will the Wildcats coaching staff figure it out that Penn State doesn't do so well against that type of running and, and run him enough to win. 11 o'clock in the morning central time, a little sleepy, possibly a place for an upset pick, but I'm not going to do it. Northwestern has only beaten Penn State in back-to-back -back years once ever. I don't think Last this is the year? time. It's his longest prediction ever. That, Come on. <laughs> uh, Penn State, I don't even <laughs> think it's close. I really don't. I think that they win 21-3 to against the Wildcats. Wow. Yes. Jake going high. Okay, well. Here's the way I see it. I'm sort of more in the lines of you guys. It's going to be out there. The, we got to control. Everyone's going to give us their best shot now. Seems like Penn State's on the way back. So, uh, and uh, the track record here with um, uh, the coach hasn't been well for uh, Coach Franklin over the years. So That's let's go. Uh, let's go. Penn State 27, um, Northwestern 26. It's going to be a last-minute field goal to win wow. it. Wow! Wow! The chair. Oh. Our guest going the closest margin, and congratulations to Joey. Hey, thanks, I appreciate that. He, he didn't that. make the pick last week, but he still gets credit That's as our guest about. picks up the first ball of the year. Lou Prado. Yeah, Mike Irwin was unable to do it. Lou Prado. Yeah, yeah con congr to congrats up. to Lou. We know he's watching, whether live or on tape delay. Neil, we're really running out of room on this graphic. <laughs> the guy that violated makes... the Geneva Convention what? today. <laughs> what? Picks four points right after me. What you, are you hey, trying you to wanna, do? You want to play hardball? You want to play hardball? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to ensure someone else is going to win. Uh, if, if I'm not going to win someone else, you're not going to. <laughs> well, good luck to all of you. We will see you next week on an off week after Penn State plays Northwestern on Saturday. We'll see you next time on the Nitwits. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Reed and Selaney, doctors Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. By Fiore True Value on 6th Avenue Altoona, just ask rental. Buy what you want, rent what you need. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South Altoona. Ask for us by name. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. You can also see the nitwits on altoonamirror.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next week.